Dear Mom and Dad, I love you very much, no matter what. some consequences. To be perfectly honest with you though, I never expected my mother to behave the way that she did. As I understand it now, my parents had a very good idea that I was gay very young, but because it was so long ago, they thought they still might be able to do something about it. I think it's just, again, the expectation to want who wants me to get married, who wants me to have children, sort of the, the famil familiar life that she has lived and known. Being pretty dramatic, I thought, well, maybe I will tell my parents, like, we play charades, and I would go inside the closet and go, okay, Mom, Dad, what am I doing? And then, like, jump out of the closet, and hopefully they would, like, get it. I knew my family loved me, and I knew that I loved them, but I didn't feel that I was being authentic with them. And how could they love me if they didn't know this very important thing about me? that I knew any gay people until I was probably in my very late teens or early 20s. I didn't really have a, a feeling or a, a view of it except that that was just another way to be. And I, and I had no prejudices against it. I thought that it was an option and it seems like a freer option and it seems like a more interesting option and I um, d didn't, didn't know and there was no one to ask. I knew it meant that you were somebody who, you know, in my case, didn't like, you know, didn't want to be with boys, but you wanted to be with girls or women and, and I, you know, or guys who like guys. And I guess my earliest thing about it was that it wasn't okay, that it wasn't a good thing. I would notice when we would be watching TV as, as a family and Phil Donahue would have a topic about people finding out that their kids were gay or their husbands were gay and they, you know, would they... It was very quiet in our house while that program was on. That I wanted to play handball, not football. That I wanted to play in the jungle gym and spin around by my back of my knee more than I wanted to run around with the boys. <laughs> There's something I've been wanting to tell you for the last year. This is not easy for me to write, and I don't think it's going to be easy for you to read. But I need to be honest with you. Well, I, I was born and raised in Hong Kong till I was 10. M my mother's a full-time homemaker. My father worked all the time. I barely remember seeing him as, as a kid. Well, I'm the youngest of three, and I have two older brothers. Reed uh, is my oldest brother, and then Brian, uh, my, he's the middle brother, and then cute little old me. My family consisted of a mom and a dad, Ken and Dolores, and I'm the oldest of three girls. And we grew up in San Jose, born and raised in the Santa Clara Valley, and uh, had a very sort of I, I think typical suburban upbringing. Oldest of four kids, both parents, until um, I was 14. My mom stayed home, my dad went to work, growing up in Newport Beach and going to school there with my two younger sisters and my little brother. I thought it was very normal. 
I was the, the middle child of three kids. I was the only girl. And uh, my father was a, a, a very high-ranking officer in the Marine Corps. So we lived all over the place until I was 10. The last four years that he was in the military before he retired from the Marines, we lived in Hawaii on Pearl Harbor, which was paradise. And as a child, I knew that. I've thought about this for so long, my head aches. My heart hurts knowing I've suppressed so many feelings. Feelings that have been there for so long. I wish there was a simple way to make sense of my thoughts and emotions that all of us could just understand. No more censoring, no more pretending, because make-believe was for when we were kids. I like to make things, and I like to cook. To play house and play tea or dress up, just the more passive, sitting down, imaginative type games, instead of the more physical games. I always had girlfriends instead of the neighborhood boys, you know, digging up holes and killing frogs and <laughs> boy things. I always was hanging out with their sisters and playing with dolls and baking cookies. The rumor is that my dad had his first suspicion when I was three. And, and maybe it was just an, an, an effeminacy or just that I was softer. I loved all the boy things as a kid. Riding dirt bikes, and playing Star Wars, skateboarding. I did wear the pearls and the cotillion dresses, but I felt most comfortable in the cleats and those yellow polyester soccer shorts. When I was seven to about 11 years old, I uh, was a gymnast. And then when I got older, maybe between about 12 and 15, 16, 17 years old, I was a competitive roller skater. Well, I went and saw a shrink um, and talked to him. But even as a kid, I realized what he was getting at. I learned to categorize behaviors, I think, in my head what parents or my parents would approve of and what I didn't think they would approve of. And I learned to lie very easily and very quickly. I was kind of a trouble kid, kind of uh, destructive and rebellious and, and, you know, kind of w wanted attention. And, and my brother was the perfect child. I would do what was told, I was told to do what was expected of me. And I did it. I was a very compliant child. I think I was a very tightly controlled child, not very spontaneous at all. After a trip to New York City in the 8th grade, I remember deciding I wanted to be an advertising executive. Seeing all those women in their suits and their briefcases was so sexy, I, I wanted to be like them, be with them perhaps, anything to grow up and get out of school. I loved school. I loved learning, sort of the whole classroom environment, and I always had good relationships with adults. School was, was challenging for me. It was, uh, uh, it was not fun at all. In the classrooms, I always sat next to the girls. We would play together at recess, and, you know, in elementary school, what do little girls do? They play on the bars and the swings, and, and I did too, and I was actually very good at it. The actual work of school was never a challenge or a problem. I never felt deficient. I felt very unsafe in the environment. I would dread going to school in the morning. I hated the entire time I was there. My stomach ached all the time. I was always nervous. I was always 
upset. I pretended I was sick a lot. I was teased a little because I think I was an odd looking kid. I didn't understand any of these things girls did. You know, I didn't understand why people would do makeup. I would try it, you know, when we'd have our little slumber parties and we'd make each other up. And I'd just be horrified by the way I looked with this stuff. And I couldn't really see how this enhanced my, my looks at all. F fifth grade was pretty bad because I remember being beaten up by older kids. And I even remember being beaten up in front of my teacher who just kind of looked the other way. And that shocked me. Like I always thought that if push came to shove, I'd be safe in front of a teacher. And it was qu quite an astounding realization to consider that I was not. My secret? I was completely drawn to women. I guess I saw it as a gift. I could appreciate women as art, but I knew I couldn't tell anyone about it. My Algebra two teacher, she indulged this gift. I made her some perfume by mixing three of Mom's favorite scents. I bought a pillow and put the homemade perfume in the pocket. She accepted my gift and I was thrilled. But what did it all mean? I remember like probably in the second or third grade, I, just being, being nervous, you know, around some girls and, and not sure why, like I wanted to be their friend, but like that's not really right. <laughs> and so it was, it, it was like an awkward feeling, but it was, it was intense and it was more interesting and it was something I didn't understand. I had a slumber party and of course, I don't know who started this, but we started to play make-out games. All the girls were kissing each other, and I remember kissing Wendy, and, and she told me that she liked kissing me better than this boy she was going out with. And I thought that was the greatest thing, but, you know, I knew that I couldn't say, God, what a birthday present. <laughs> Even though I was interested in boys, that really the solid relationships I had were with girls. Maybe because we were the same sex or we had sort of grown up similarly, there was just a greater empathy. I was more comfortable with them and we could talk very easily. Things were a little awkward with boys. I worked my ass off in school and was rewarded with A's and accolades from my teachers. David and I competed in every class. He kidded me relentlessly, whispering dyke, when I walked past his chair. It cut deep inside. I wanted to transfer schools, but that would mean he won. Did he know something I didn't? I think he knew it just hurt, telling me I would join the lesbian sorority in college. I threw myself into sports and studies, and I just wanted to be like everybody else, but I knew I wasn't. I pretended to have more crushes on guys than I ever did because that's all girls got together and talk about and talked about. So it was that was sort of a topic um, to befriend people that I really wanted to get to know. Later in high school, I did meet a young lady. Her name is Chrissy, and she and I became great friends. And it turned out that she was quite attracted to me in more than just a friendship. I thought I would try dating her. I thought I would try kissing her and, and having sex. I thought I would try it. I thought there was something wrong with me, that I was just a mess. I was screwed up. I was broken. I, you know, I'd read about this stuff about sex and think, well, I don't get it. It must be me. And then in 10th grade, I had an actual girlfriend-girlfriend relationship. We made out a lot, and we held hands a lot, and had your regular high school note-passing relationship. And it was great to have her, and I worked hard to keep it working even though she wanted to have sex and I didn't. And I said it was because I was ashamed of my body or, and, or didn't want her to see me naked or, you know, I had every excuse in the book and because I just wasn't interested in having sex with her but was very interested in the companion relationship. I guess I was happy with men but it wasn't enough. Uh, there was something, I'm always distracted. I guess then I wasn't, I wasn't happy enough. That's what I... I could only conclude. Um, I, 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 would, I would think, well, there's something more or something isn't there. I did have sex with a girl that 
I worked with, and we were actually just friends. There was no illusion. We had great sex. She totally was a real teacher and real patient. For me, having sex with a woman was like trying to stick a marshmallow in a piggy bank. I mean, it just didn't work. I couldn't do it. It was great physically. It's warm. It's soft. There was n none of the absolute electrical charge I get. Sometimes even when Mike just looks at me, much less run his hand along my leg. It's a charge. My body physically responds to him. And I know it's mental. I could close my eyes and imagine it's a woman running their hand on my stomach. But when he runs his hand up and down my stomach, every capillary dances. Mom and Dad, as your only daughter, I know you have expectations of me. How could you not? As the years passed, we never talked about homosexuality. It would be like an invasion in our household. Besides, I was still so confused, still trying to make sense of my feelings. And how would this affect our family? As I was getting older into my teens, uh, my late teens, I started recognizing the typical gay man, what a typical gay man was and how they acted and what they wore and, and uh, the kind of cars they drove or whatever. And, uh, and I started recognizing that those were the same type of people that my dad was having lunch with or going to meetings with or camping or whatever. And then one day, I saw my dad uh, greet somebody who came over to visit, and I realized at that moment that my dad was gay. That was hard to accept, because I thought, you know, my parents are going to have to get divorced, just like all those TV shows I saw, and, and I was afraid that uh, we were going to have to sell the house, and I was going to have to move, and I was going to have to go to a new school, and, and uh, it was fearful. I was scared. I didn't know what to do. My mother uh, is a very beautiful woman. She's a very tall, stately, imperious presence. So I love my mother, but you know she's not somebody who do, who is used to not getting her own way. In the uh, cultural sense too, in the community, um, my mom's friends are all married um, Chinese women that play mahjong. You know. And anything a little bit different is, is just huge. My f father decided we needed to have a family meeting so that he could tell us. And I was about 16 years old, so I hadn't come out yet myself. And my dad sat us down, and right away he just said, uh, it's time that I let you know that I'm gay, and there's nothing we can do to change the fact that you know, he's gay. And that he'd been through all different types of therapy about uh, you know, shock therapy and, and all sorts of horrible things that they did to people in the 60s and 70s to try to, to cure you or whatever, and uh, he, it, he wasn't going to change. During the meeting, my parents let us know that it's perfectly okay to be gay and that there's nothing wrong with it and you can be healthy and happy and, oh, it's okay to be gay and, well, my dad's gay. Well, then, you know, I think they all turned to me and wanted me to come out. So half of the meeting was my dad coming out of the closet, and the second half was, okay, Clark, now it's your turn. I, that's how I felt, that the pressure was on. You know, we're, everyone's coming out and being open and honest, and I was in no position, or I was not ready by any means to, uh, to come out of the closet. So, oh, no, not me. No, I'm not gay. Uh -uh. It never occurred to me that my feeling different might have to do with being gay. I didn't want to believe that. It was too scary. Why would I choose that lifestyle? Of course, I imagined sending out Christmas cards with the photogenic husband, the golden retriever, and a pair of twins in gingham plaid. But over time, I realized the closest I would come to that picture was buying it in the Kmart picture frame. I don't think I even gave a thought to getting married. The whole thought of, you know, marriage, kids, you know, house in the suburbs, 
Maybe it didn't appeal because I grew up in the suburbs and I wanted to be different from my family. I couldn't see myself in a wedding. You know, I kept seeing, I kept seeing weddings on TV and I kept seeing all those things. And I just couldn't see myself in, in like that wedding gown, a big fluffy thing. I'm like, well, why don't I see myself in this? And it was very troubling. Things were just in upheaval. Like I wasn't, nothing felt right. It was just, you know, all questions. Ken and I met when we worked for the same company, we worked for a security company. Now we right away became very good friends. And though it was apparent to me that he was interested in more of a relationship, I really liked him, but um, I didn't view him as someone that I felt romantic toward. Although that did change, we, we did become involved with each other. Feelings for women would come to me in my dreams. I would awake with a smile and say, no, I can't. In college, I had crushes on men, and I dated once in a while. But a voice inside would whisper, you're gay, you're gay. I wasn't ready to hear that. I went to UC Berkeley and uh, study psychology. I enrolled in an upper division English class. Um, it was called Bisexual, Lesbian, Gay, Science Fiction, and Fantasy. So, th I mean, you know, and I wasn't really, I wasn't interested in science fiction or fantasy. I knew that from just my English experience. So I was there for another reason. I was there to explore. In my late teens, I was skating. So my instructor he introduced me to another young skater named David. So I remember staying at his house and he invited me to stay with him, this time in his room. By this time I was really nervous, thinking, oh my gosh, I'm so attracted to this guy, and now he's asking me to stay over, you know, what do I do? As time passed and we spent more time together, I was more attracted to him and he was still attracted to me and his relationship um, with his girlfriend wasn't working out. So we ended up dating again and becoming very involved and, you know, living together again and then ultimately getting married. I, I went to the uh, Gay Pride Parade. It was a coming out, I think, coming out rally or something at, at Berkeley my first year there. And um, one uh, gay man friend said, oh, why don't you kiss my friend over here and, and oh, his woman friend. And, and then she leaned over and, and kissed me. And that was, that was it, just, just on the lips. I was stunned for, for quite a few seconds, and I looked, I looked around and sort of observed, you know, <laughs> is my mom going to jump up from behind a tree? <laughs> is, uh, <laughs> is, you know, is it going to get cloudy? Um, just waiting for some, waiting for some consequence, some, some response, but there was, there was nothing. So I got into the bed, and I lied there perfectly still with my arms at my side. I didn't want to touch him. I didn't want, I was so nervous. My heart must have been pounding a thousand miles an hour. I was like, wow, this is great. This is great stuff. And uh, I felt like I moved forward. Of course, I didn't get a wink of sleep, but I would roll over and let my arm relax. And then I noticed his arm was next to my arm. And then I noticed his foot touched my foot, and I didn't pull my foot away. And then we touched and kissed, and, and uh, we took each other's clothes off, and it was incredible. I really just wanted to fit in, to have a boyfriend, someone to pick me up at the airport and give me bottles of rain just because. My ideas of love surely came from the movies. The happily ever afters were convincing, but more alluring were the women in the films. There, my secret could come to life, but I still wasn't clear on what it all meant. Leah was married at the time. She was a year older than I, and we ended up just immediately, you know, kind of glomming onto one of each other and spending all our time together. I never had a dream of what my wedding would be like because I, I didn't imagine that. 
I never envisioned that happening. I mean, we already felt married. Really what the wedding was about was celebrating with others what we already knew. Then I, I moved back home to go to law school uh, in, in L.A. and I tried very hard to just think, I'm just going to date a man and I'm just going to think marriage. I was thinking about Leah and about one o'clock in the morning there was a knock on my door, the doorbell rang. And I'm thinking, well, who the hell is this? And so, you know, it ended up being Leah and she was in tears because she and her husband had had this fight and she didn't know where else to go. We were married for four years. I think in some ways we were growing apart and maybe always had been. And that pace was accelerated. Uh, I was traveling a lot for work and sort of the differences between Ken and I were becoming more apparent. And one thing led to another, and before we knew, we knew it, you know, that we were making out and we were making love, and that's how, you know, I came out. It was like this little light bulb went off in my head, and I went, this is what I'm missing. Ken was having an affair, and it's not that I found out about it, but I knew there were certain changes in his behavior, and eventually that was confirmed, and, um, and my whole world was shaken. I really thought that I would spend the rest of my life with Ken. It, it took me years to get over that, really. I didn't date until I worked for Lambda Legal Defense and Education Fund, and that's a, a nonprofit legal organization that advocates gay and lesbian rights. I felt free, you know, being in that environment. So um, I started seeing a woman, and I, everything was, that was fine. It felt fine. You know, thoughts about women had always been it, it sort of circulating in, in my thoughts and in, in my fantasies and it seemed like an opportunity to, to let these fantasies come out and play you know to see if there was anything really within these sort of wishes or dreams that could really work for me in real life. I had gone to a, um, a costume ball with my roommate Chris and met a woman there and, you know just had a great time until very late that night and I was completely blown away by her, just really taken by her. And She was obviously also very attracted to me and, uh, and we made a date for the next evening and we got in our car, in my car, and then we drove to my apartment and we walked three flights of stairs and then we went into my bedroom and we had sex. It was great, it felt wonderful. I started going out with women, you know, physically, it felt very comfortable and very, like, what it was meant to feel like. I will never forget her smile, her curly brown hair. We met in ceramics class. I could hardly sit still next to her. My hand shook so much, which, of course, wasn't so good for my ceramics grade. We would talk about our dream boyfriends, but my dream boyfriend was her. No, I, I couldn't think that way. I scolded myself for the thought. I didn't want that for myself. I couldn't be gay in Newport Beach. It simply wasn't an option. The debutante gone astray, they would say. I met Becky through the AIDS ride. I, I took one look at her and I was very drawn to her. I just thought, oh. She has such a beautiful face. My first semester in law school, I went to a counselor to see a, a school uh, psychologist. <laughs> and I sat down and I said, I'm gay. I'm like, oh my god, what is this? What did I just say? I didn't even intend for that to come out. But I did. And uh, she said, OK. Um, any questions about that at all? And I said, no. She was ready to move forward into this relationship. We started kissing and, you know, ended up making love, and, and I cried. It was really an amazing experience. You know, I didn't realize that, that two women with, you know, coming together with all of their uh, emotional uh, energy would be so overwhelming, and it could be, but it was also really exciting, and it felt like just the right place for me to be. It was just right. I played guitar, I played at clubs in, around the college, I played at college things. Um, I performed and it was sort of an outlet for all of this emotional stuff that was very repressed. You know, I was a good girl. 
and I would sing, and then pff, all of this emotion, all this passion would come out, all this sexuality that, you know, would blow people away. I, I, had, I had come into this new life and made certain decisions about what I wanted to do with my life and who I wanted to be involved in, and most of my friends knew. I took most of them along on the journey with me, um, and none of my family knew. That I was, felt it was time for me to come out, and, and I wanted to come out so I could meet people and not lie about it anymore and the stories and the lies and the drama that build on top of keeping a secret like that are, are exhausting and I was through with it. All right, no more. I thought my parents would have a very hard time with it. That my mom would accept it but may, maybe not really embrace it. I may never be able to take, you know, lovers home. I had always known that she had known because I'd been denying it since I was a small child, since before I knew I had been denying it. since. Three, five, I'd been denying it. And so it really was taking back the last 12 years of stories and saying, I'm willing to admit that was all deception. Mom, there finally was a turning point. Remember when I signed up for the AIDS ride? That was the moment my world opened up. Everyone knew me as straight, and I thought I was. But on the ride, I met so many wonderful people, gay and straight. I felt at peace. No, they didn't try to recruit me. I was their token straight friend, or, or was I? I began to really think about my sexuality, and I realized the issue wasn't going away. I tried to forget about it. Just think marriage to a man. It would be so much easier. But I discovered I didn't really have much of a say. For me, coming out was all or nothing. I was going to tell everybody all at once, and if you liked it, great. If you, if you had a problem with it, that was your problem. I didn't need you. <laughs> Becky had moved in with me by that time, and I was planning on going back to the Bay Area for Christmas, as I did every year. And it occurred to me that I wanted Becky to go, and I was really worried about telling my family. I want to be able to, to share with them um, my lifestyle, you know, such that th their expectations would change. The first person I came out to was my older brother, Peter, who I ha always had a troubled relationship with. He was not a nice guy. He was not a nice older brother. And he kept asking me all these questions about Leah all these questions about Leah. And I said, Peter, you know, finally, you know, I said, Peter, you should just let it go. And finally he said, okay, just give me one good reason why I shouldn't go out with her. And I, by this time, was furious. And I just said, all right, you stupid motherfucker, because she's my lover and I don't want you to put your fucking hands on her. And as soon as the words were out of my mouth, I thought, oh my God, he is going to use this against me. Find somebody and I'm going to have it. You know, we never discussed homosexuality. We never discussed any of these things. And yet, you know, it was occurring to me that if I wasn't sharing this with my family, that they really didn't get to have an honest relationship with me. I was preventing them from, from being authentic with me. Mom, then I met her. I was at a meeting for work, and this petite blonde woman walked in the room. I started shaking, my hands were sweaty, and my heart began to race. She walked towards me and I thought I was going to melt to the ground. As she was about six inches away, we recognized each other and embraced. I had met her on the AIDS ride two years before. I walked out of that meeting scared to death. I had always tried to rationalize my feelings. But I could no longer ignore what my body was saying at that moment. I was a teenager all over again. This time I fit in. I felt more complete than ever before, and I wanted to share this with you. But were we ready? I wanted to do it before another year passed. My birthday was coming up in a few days, so 
the time had come. To this day, the fact that my brother waited two and a half or three years to use this information still surprises me. I still, you know, because I knew, you know, he is going to tell mom about this and it's going to be horrible. I had a girlfriend my second year of law school and we took some private pictures and of course I was stupid enough to forget what was on the the roll of film I took it was on the I think there were maybe like 15 pictures and not all of them were gay only like a couple and the rest of them I used at my grandmother's uh, birthday party so I gave the role to my mother to develop and uh, she did sure enough a couple months after my 23rd birthday I'd, I've been out in LA for a year now my mother called, we had this, we were chatting, 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 having this wonderful conversation. And all of a sudden she said, you know, Peter said the interest, most interesting thing to me about you and Leah the other night. And she said, Peter said you and Leah were lovers. Now my brother was a, was a liar of tremendous magnitude, so my mother didn't really believe him. So when I said to her, Peter told you the truth, Mom, we were. My mother was just shocked, because she really just thought it was Peter being hateful. She put it down at a dinner table where everybody saw the pictures before my mom saw the pictures that nobody should have seen. Um, my mom's friends, uh, my grandmother, my cousins, and my aunt from Hong Kong who was just here visiting um, for a week and she got to see the pictures. And her husband, I don't think, saw the pictures. So. Then my mom looked at the picture and go, ah, and brought the pictures to my room. Um, so when I saw the pictures on my desk, of course, I freaked out and I knew I was going to just get my butt kicked. And my mother was just disgusted and would tell me this and very upset and couldn't believe it and it was just really terrible. And basically, uh, her last words to me before she hung up the phone was, shit page the sickens me, boom. I was going to tell them that I had fallen in love, I had fallen in love with Becky, and I wanted uh, to bring her home for Christmas. And I, I called my mother first and uh, had a long conversation with her and through the whole conversation thinking, when am I going to tell her? When, when is it going to feel right to tell her? And uh, we got to the part where we said, uh, okay, good night, talk to you later, and I hung up the phone, I still hadn't told her. I wanted to understand it all before I shared my epiphany with you. I went right to the library and hid in the book stacks. With tears rolling down my cheeks, I read everything I could find about being gay. I could barely check out the books. What would the library clerk think? But slowly I began to stop hating myself for this profound expression of love. I started telling friends. And with each person I told, I was free. I was home. And I immediately called her back. I said, Mom, I called you for a reason. I have something to tell you. It's very, it's hard for me to tell you this. I don't know, I, I don't know how to tell you. You know, I gathered up the family. But a few days earlier, my best friend, Lana, had come over to the house. And uh, she was very upset. And she was in tears, so I, was hug I hugged her, and she was crying on my shoulder, and, and my mother passed by and saw this. I didn't expect her to cut me off for a year and a half, and I didn't expect that here it is, you know, 24 years later, this is still an issue we're dealing with. You know, my mother was very important to me, and I loved her, and her love was very important to me, and it was just, you know, I, it was severed. And she said, well, just, just say it. Just say it. I said, Mom, I'm gay. And I just and I just let there be the silence there, you know, because whatever came next had to come from her, I figured. And and I wanted to have her real true reaction. And she said, Well, our congratulations in order. And she meant, you know. Is this a good thing for you? Are you in love? Is there someone special in your life? It was shocking, but on the other hand, hey, she just did the hardest thing in her life. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to make me cry back at yes, all. Don't look at no, me. I'm not <laughs>
<laughs> in my mother's living room, she's on one couch and I'm on the other. And I remember sitting and then I was kind of sitting with my legs crossed and then I kind of wrapped up and I told her, yeah, I, I think I'm gay. I think that's, that's it. That's what, it's, that's what this has been about. It's like, hey, he doesn't change anything. Still my daughter. Mm -hmm. So, so what? You know, it's like life goes on. I gathered them in the living room and sat them down and was just overwhelmed with emotions and I started to cry. And then my mother, instinctively, she started to cry. She thought, oh no, you know, here, here it comes. And I said, I can't keep this a secret any longer. I'm, I'm gay. And my mother, my mother stops crying and she looks at me and she says, oh, shoo, she wipes her forehead. She says, I thought you had gotten Lana pregnant. Mom, Dad, I remember I wanted to tell you two about Jacqueline. Were you ready to hear it? Was I ready to share it? I wanted someone to know my excitement and my fears about the road ahead. I love you both so much and hope you too can share in my happiness. So that is why I'm writing you to tell you who I am and who I love. Mom, Dad, I'm gay. She didn't talk to me for probably two weeks. Just complete silence. That is so unlike my mother. She constantly nags, talks a lot, loves to talk. Biggest talker I know. And she didn't talk to me for two weeks. Very angry. Gave me dirty looks all day. <laughs> well, this is an aspect I didn't expect to have to think about in my life. But, oh, well. There it is. You know, it's like, okay, here's a new challenge for Mom. Are you up? Oh, yes, I am. Watch me. I could have never anticipated that response from her. And I was so relieved and so amazed that my mother, you know, had that sort of emotional fortitude. And, you know, ultimately she just, she wanted for me to be happy, however that was going to manifest itself. And my dad knew about it. My dad gave me a talk, um, the only talk we've ever had on that. And he said, it was like a business negotiation thing. Uh, he said, I don't care what you did in the past. I, I just want you to, I just want to know if you can stop thinking about it. Stop even thinking about it from now on. I looked at him like, you are kidding. I felt ashamed. I felt guilty, you know, because I was the good kid. And this wasn't very good. She wasn't happy about this. You know, making Phi Beta Kappa was a good thing. Being a lesbian was not. And then he kind of gave me that little spiel on being normal and, you know, men are supposed to be with women and y you have too much time on your hands. He told me to get a job because <laughs> that's why I'm thinking about lesbianism because I have too much time. We wiped away the tears and my, we made a few jokes about it and I told him about I was, how I was going to jump out of the closet and uh, my dad simply said, you know, just don't lose sight of who you are. Don't let this engulf you. It's, it's a part of you. It's just not who you are. He was very hurt and he said, I'm very hurt and I knew he was and I'm sorry that he was, but there was nothing I can do. Um, so then I, I left his room and it was never brought up again. I can't believe I finally came out. For the last nine months, I've wanted to tell you this so much. I have grown over this year, and I now feel ready to share this with you and Dad. I am scared of your reaction, but it is so freeing to finally be completely honest with you. As we test the current of the river and learn from it, that is the best we can do, and that is enough. And I think even slower. I do remember feeling as though a huge burden had been lifted off me when I told my mother. And then I just felt so relieved and satisfied and warm. My mom was just a little concerned. She's like, well, are you going to, are you going to change at all? Are you going to, you know, start wearing dresses or makeup or whatever and I, I said no I was I, I'm, I'm still the same person I just 
I'm not, I like dressing like a man. I enjoy wearing men's clothes, and I enjoy dating men. I don't, you know, I wasn't going to change at all. I was going to be the same person. I just was going to be honest about who I was and open about it. I felt so supported and so loved and so aware of how I had not let my family in for all these years. And that wasn't their fault, that was mine. You know, I hadn't allowed them to have a real relationship with me and I felt really, really blessed and really honored. This is going to take time. You are now just getting to deal with this. But no, I'm still your same daughter. This is just another part of me and hopefully you can see that and we can grow together. When I came out to my mom at 23, we didn't uh, talk. She didn't make any type of communication with me, although I did write her a couple of letters, um, which went un unanswered. And then all of a sudden, about a year and a half later, she called me up as if nothing had happened. She'd always been pestering me about it. There, I, I think. I knew what she was getting at, and I just didn't want to admit it to her or to me, because then there was no go going back. After coming out to my parents, I think our relationship changed, obviously, for the better. There were no more secrets. There was no more stories. Uh, I could be honest with my parents about who I was, who I was dating, you know, asking my mother, oh, I met this guy and we exchanged phone numbers, you know, what do I do, should I call him? And my mom would say, well, why don't you wait a day or two, you know, just, just openness with your family, which I think everyone should have, and I never had that before. Dating has been very interesting in this little town. I have a, when I first moved here, I was the new kid on the block, and that worked out really well because I got a lot of dates. Um, now that I've been here for several months, the whole new kid in town, theory and that concept is kind of worn off so I have to find a new edge somehow. I do. My mom said don't tell me anything I'd rather not know. She's said that many times but you know should I it, it's that was my dilemma should I respect her wishes and not tell her anything um, and keep the relationship closed because that's not what she really wants. I think she she because she keeps asking me questions. And also, there's a face factor that's a big deal in, in Chinese culture. Do you want to, um, you know, that what, what does it look like to other people that her 26-year-old daughter doesn't have a boyfriend, you know, then that whole thing. And I'm supposed to be married by 30, and she's been you know, saying that she wants a grandchild, but I don't want one if you're not married. I went home. Um, the first thing my mother noticed was that I had pierced an ear, and she got very freaked about that and w asked me if I was in some S&M club <laughs> in West Hollywood. <laughs> and I'm thinking, where does she read these things? In the Ladies' Home Journal? I just had no sense of where she got these questions. And I think it created an, e an ease for all of us by knowing that there was something really monumentally different about my life. It's also changed our relationship, my parents' relationship and mine, uh, because my mother understands a little bit more about what it is to be gay. They simply accepted it as the fact that it was and incorporated who I loved into our life together. I hope you'll have lots of questions and I'm here with answers when you feel ready. The only thing that has really changed is who I love not who I hate, but who I love. And that gives me such hope that everything will be okay. And so she asked me to meet her for lunch and to go shopping, you know, and, I, and so I did. And I think we each put down three rounds of drinks during this conversation, which started out by my, my, you know, my mother asking me questions about being a lesbian. So then she asked me if I ever thought I would get married, and I said, not to a man. 
And she asked me if I thought I would have children, and I said, well, I, I, I've thought about it. Then she asked me which, which was I, the man or the woman, you know, and I just went, oh my God, you know, Mom, I'm, you know, I'm not into that at all. That whole Butch Fenton thing, I'm not, you know. And then she asked me if I ever thought about having a sex change operation. I mean, she just, I mean, I, in retrospect, the question about whether I was in some S&M cult in West Hollywood was, was sort of benign to compared to all, all this other string of questions that she had. Well, she knows that I'm uh, the same person I've always been uh, after I came out, and, and she sees that. And all of a sudden, you know, boom, it came out. She goes, well, Paige. I just don't think a woman can be fulfilled unless she's filled. And I just wanted to say the snottiest thing I could, but I just thought, you know, <clears throat> just stuff it down. And instead, I said to her, well, you know, Mother, there are other forms of vaginal penetration besides a penis. And she looked at me with the most startled or quizzical look on her face. Like, I said something like, you know, the moon is made of gorgonzola cheese. She just, like, what are you talking about? So I stuck up my left hand and I wiggled my three fingers. And she freaked. She just went, oh my God, Paige, as if everybody in the restaurant knew what I was talking about. I feel so lucky. I'm so lucky. Yeah, and ma maybe part of it is coming out at a later age, because I didn't come out until I was... 33, 34, something like that. You know, I had already had some pretty major life experiences. I'd been married, I had been on my own for years. And so, in some ways, they were used to there being big changes in my life. And this was, you know, one other big change. She was mortified, and I felt good. We have never talked about sex since then. <laughs> Please know I am happy. Everything finally makes sense. I feel as if I've come home and I want you two to be there with me. Mom and Dad, I love you very much, no matter what. Love always, your daughter. process really never ending. It's each person you meet, you're going to have to do this whole coming out thing again. And um, people always assume that's the problem. I guess if there's one word for it, beside, you know, besides it being, um, it being a difficult process and also a liberating process, it's really, it's an ongoing process. <laughs> Being in the closet is so far from my reality at this point that it's difficult for me to express what life would be like because it wouldn't be living anymore. I'm glad it took so long for me to get this comfortable with myself because now reaping the rewards are great. I'm stronger now than I Not strong enough to close off that door that holds back those images of me. Part of what drives us to come out is that the alternative to pretend to be who we aren't is so completely crushing to the psyche that we have to. And that's sort of how I felt about me. and suffering the consequences with my family, a loss of love, a loss of warmth, a loss of approval. It was all worth it because in the end, you know, I just feel, not just only felt, but feel good about who I am. I mean, my mother is a trooper. My mother is a fucking trooper. She stands up in a crowd if somebody makes a comment about homosexuality or the HIV issue. I mean, my mother has changed from 
the cute little housewife who knits to a outspoken public I, I don't even know what to call my mother she's revolutionary my mother the other day I was telling her that that the woman I'm dating now is it's wonderful and um, my mom's like you know it's really hard to find a good friend male or female and I, I think in her mind it was the friend refers to you know boyfriend girlfriend like your partner and and that that was a big step in in accepting it Growing up, we always knew we were lucky. We always felt a little special coming from this huge Italian-Mexican family. Incredible energy. They fiercely and intensely loved each other. And then as you grow up and you look around and you realize so many other people have been ostracized from their families, especially in the gay community. Feel so electric when 